Hey guys, good morning. So today I'm up in the cut flower garden. I wanna do a few things. First off, sunflowers are just starting to open. There's just a couple varieties that are starting to bloom. This whole area is just so exciting. And you know, going into this project, I've told you guys numerous times, I was trying to be an ultimate realist and not set myself up for disappointment, given the fact that I had to plant everything so late. We didn't have water in here until mid to late June, and then all the untested soil. And I mean, just by looking at our soil, you would think, oh, nothing's gonna grow there. Uh, but I have been so pleased with how everything's done. And I did try to like, target amend the soil i just like use land and sea compost and biotone starter fertilizer which i do think helped um, but i didn't fully amend any of the areas up here which is a total noob thing to do um you really need to focus on soil health before you jump in usually but i just thought let's just give this a go i was so excited to you know do something up here on the new property and it was a really good so far learning experience on drip tape on how we want our garden set up and laid out once we move it over to the permanent location which I think we're gonna start working on this fall because we hope to actually not be gardening in this space next year like we're gonna take everything down and move it to its permanent spot and now we know exactly how we want to do it so what I want to do up here in this space today is give you guys kind of a mini tour of how some of the things are doing that I'm excited about uh, I'm gonna be harvesting sweet pea seeds I have those planted along the front fence line of this space and they are shot like they've gone through a couple of really hot weeks it's gonna be another hot one this week and they're a cool season flowering vine and so they've really lasted longer than I thought they would um, you know given the fact that I planted them when it was already so hot outside and they still have some blooms so at least be able to show you what to expect the blooms to look like but they didn't grow super tall or anything like that um, I also want to pull I think I'm gonna pull all my straw flowers today um, because we have each one of these rectangles this whole garden space I don't know if you can see it's just like a big X through it there's a big 10-foot uh, walkway big enough that we can get our gator through going um, each direction and it just creates four big rectangles each of which is on one zone uh, and so I have to water everything in each one of those rectangles separately and that's something we've learned this has been such a good learning year um, we've learned that we need to have multiple zones per section so like watermelon needs less water this time of year than all my other vine crops like pumpkins and I can't really separate them easily this year. So I might not, while I have watermelons growing like crazy, I may not be able to shut the water off to those and really get the flavor good in them because I can't shut the water off to all the other stuff in that area. So the straw flowers have kind of succumbed to being waterlogged. They like a dry, dry location, but there aren't very many things in that rectangle up there that can take dry conditions they need a lot of water um, so they're just totally yellow they have flowers on them so I think I'll harvest whatever uh, whatever flowers are nice looking and then I'm gonna pull the plant so I can just not look at them anymore and we might cut a few flowers for a small arrangement if we have time so all of that said let me show you how we've got the layout going on here if you've never seen this space before um, and then we'll look at some fun stuff probably should have started in the front which is right there but that's okay you can kind of see this is one of the pathways that goes through. This whole section up here, they're all sunflowers. I think I planted 24 varieties in here. I would have to go through and double check. We'll know once they start to bloom, but 1,700 feet of sunflowers right here, you guys. And they're all doing amazing. And you can see how differently they grow. So there are some that stay shorter right here. So this variety, let me look at the tag. This is called Florist Sunny Bouquet. And you can see like how they've all, like a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them have buds. And they're just getting ready to rock. I love it. And then we've got some taller varieties going on over here. So one of the blooms you can see, look at this. That is called Pro Cut Plum. Isn't that a beauty? Look at all the insects they are attracting interesting kind of love it there's one in the Sun you can see the color a little bit better I think this one's called is this a chocolate cherry what is this yes chocolate cherry right here gorgeous let's move down this row a bit I always want to like keep an arm out for spider webs <laughs> make sure we don't run into any Oh my goodness. 
So there's more pro cut plums getting ready to open. Interesting to me to figure out, like when you have all of these things planted so close together, you really get to learn about their growth habit and which ones are faster. Okay, we're gonna move all the way to the end. Go down a different row. There's some of the sweet peas right there. Some of them still are looking okay. There's another one. This is what I wanted to look at. What variety is this? Are these more chocolate cherries? Do you see that one? Oh, so pretty. I tagged these so weird. These are called Moulin Rouge right here. Looks like there's just a small section. It starts here and ends right here before a new variety starts. This one's called a Jade Branching Sunflower. That clear kind of lemony yellow. And then these right here, this whole big section, are sunflower seeds that I gathered from sunflowers I liked last year that I had no uh, actual variety name for. But they clearly do well in our area. They're doing great. I haven't used any insecticides in this entire space. Like the entire thing. I haven't baited the dahlias like I said I was going to. But I have been keeping my eye on things, noticing minimal, like very little damage on some leaves of the sunflowers, probably from earwigs is what we normally deal with. But it's not so much that I feel like I wanna use an insecticide. I mean, cause I'm really just concerned about getting blooms. I don't really care what the leaves look like so much. So if you take a look at this plant, like pretty good, honestly. Got a little bit of damage, not bad. Flowers look great. If I was dealing like with a really rampant problem, I would probably bait for earwigs, but I just felt like it was unnecessary. I've also not dealt with any squash bugs yet. And usually in our area, like we get squash bugs really bad, but if you're planting in a brand new area that's kind of separate from where you've planted squash and pumpkins before, typically you can get away with no squash bugs for about a year. Um, if I were to plant again in this area next year, they would probably find them. And I hope me just saying those these words don't bring them in for the rest of the season because they're doing so well. But I've been really thankful to not have to deal with any major insect issues. And then here's my short dahlia patch. <laughs> they haven't put on much upward growth at all, but a lot of them are budding up. So I'm just gonna get a lot of shorties here. Look at this. There's buds in there. Honestly, when we planted them, I didn't know how many would survive because they were so desiccated because I waited so long. Um, so I was really concerned about just getting some growth, just enough to get them going to where I could dig them this fall, plant them at the right time next year and get blooms next year. So they're doing great. Most all of them came up, like there's still some that are just tiny and like living, just not growing much. We've got some blooms here or not blooms, but buds right here. So I think we're gonna get some pretty color. And honestly, we've got another two months at least of summer-like weather. Uh, so they might surprise us yet. They might put on some more upward growth and they might fill in. I kind of hope they do just because Aaron and I spent a lot of time putting in this staking system. <laughs> I want it to feel worth it. This is the most fun area of our entire garden, like the entire thing all put together. There are 48 squash and pumpkins planted in here and 12 melons. So a mixture of watermelon and cantaloupe Check this out. These are Crimson Sweets right here. Looking really good, that one's bigger. Couple, I'm just like shadowing everything this morning. There's a couple nice ones in here. Right there. This is a nice big one right here, look at that. Jeez, oh. Hey bud, what are you doing? Hey. If we go in a little further, these right here are sugar babies. So smaller size watermelon there. And there's just a whole, whole bunch of them. You can see all the rest in here. And I don't think I'm gonna attempt to walk through most of these. I spaced them six feet apart this way. And then each mound was spaced six and a half feet apart this way, which is clearly not enough space because like it is hard to walk around in here. Oh, ooh, this is exciting. This is a variety called One Too Many. Oh, and there's a watermelon next to it. Everything's kind of like growing together. But this one has really interesting, like an interesting pattern on its rind. And this will mature to more of an orange. It's like an orange netting over a white base. 
Here are some cantaloupe. A whole bunch of them. Look at that. Aren't those beautiful? Are these the porcelain? Nope, fairy tale pumpkins. Oh, beautiful stems. This pumpkin vine has helped itself to the trellis here. And I don't know if this is gonna wanna get really big or not. We'll see what happens, it's kinda cute. Got a bunch of acorn squash in here. Oh yay, finally shaded enough, we can see. And another something mixed in with my acorn squash. I think this might be the only little island of space out here, but I planted 60 hills originally, eight of which did not germinate, so I had to come in with a type of pumpkin. I did sugar pie and jack belittles that have a shorter maturity day and I had to fill in the gaps with those. And so those are just naturally a little bit behind because I think they're like, boy, I wanna say like two or three weeks behind all the rest of the vines in here, but we should have some production by the end of the season. So right here in this soggy area where I showed you it was kind of leaking out, I've got Cinderella pumpkins. Looking absolutely beautiful. Need to figure this water issue out though because I can't sit in here. I'm just not sure what to do exactly. It looks like my water issue is coming from here from the bottom of these. Yep. So these galvanized tubs have been really fun, but you might remember we put, I think it was three or four bags of bark at the bottom of each one of them, just because I thought, well, these are huge containers. We're not gonna need that whole soil reservoir. I'm not planting anything super deep rooted. And it was a lot less expensive to put bark at the bottom instead and just fill it up a bit. I don't think I'm gonna do that again. It just messes with the drainage of everything. I know there's a lot of people who like to do that and I'm just not one of them. I just thought I would give it a shot again because honestly it's not hurt to the development of the plants one bit, but it's just been weird for water. And then opposite the squash and pumpkins and tomatoes, we have the high tunnel, which has been an amazing help to us this year. And then this area, everything looks a little bit small, but these are the ones that I planted recently. So I think it's just been, I don't know, 10 days, maybe two weeks ago, I planted fall crops in this space. Um, and then this space here were the 10 flowers that I planted mid-July. Um, they are the short season type that you can still plant from seed mid-season and expect to see color. Pretty good luck with everything in here. There was a couple of fails, but pretty good. So like, I won't go through every little thing, but we've got some corn that I should have corn from by the end of September. We've got peas, beans, uh, beets right here. There's uh, cilantro and basil and three varieties of carrots, 12 hills of cucumbers, three zucchini and parsley. And then the flowers start at the obelisk there. We've got morning glory around it. And then I've got cosmos, calendula, marigolds, zinnias, uh, sunflowers. At the end of the last row there, there's the Mexican sunflowers and then bachelor's buttons, more morning glories, and then nasturtiums, which I think I over soaked the seeds <laughs> when I planted them. They were really squishy. And let's see, I got two, four, six, eight. Eight sad looking plants up out of that whole space. You win some and you lose some. <laughs> And then in the front rectangle, I've just got a menagerie of stuff. Honestly, I didn't get the whole thing planted. Like this section, I never planted anything. There's a few sections in here I didn't plant anything. I was kind of saving them too for later fall crops, like putting in some cabbage, starts and broccoli and greens and stuff like that, which I might still do. Everything's done pretty well up here. The Gallardia are fantastic. These are the heated up yellow and scarlet Gallardias. Play in the blue salvia. Can you see all the pollinators? Can you see them just flying all over the place around these plants? Oh. We've got peppers right here, Rudbeckia right here, and they're just budding up. I think there's a cherry brandy that's blooming. Oh, and there's a snapdragon mixed in with that one. Awesome. Little cherry brandy. This whole row, they're all zinnias, as well as these up here. Probably turn the water off up here, it's starting to pool. Look at these, just starting to look awesome. The corn, which I had to stake up after a really strong windstorm. I'll show you my staking system. So this is what I did. I had two leftover ranch panels that are 16 feet long. So I pounded three fence posts in just along each row and zip tied a ranch panel to it. And then I just lashed bundles of corn up to the ranch panel. So you'll see like all along here, there's just bundles of corn lashed to it. 
And they're all staying upright and they're all tasseling. In fact, there's some corn starting to form. Yeah, look at that. We're gonna have corn really soon. And the rest of these things, just random. I've got snapdragons, which I'm letting most of them go to seed to collect seed from them. These are the straw flowers we're gonna pull today because I just cannot handle the amount of water I have to put in this space for everything else to survive. Um, and then we've got gomfrina and asters. Those are probably the prettiest things. Hold on. Lysianthus, oh. These things, I need to cut them. You're supposed to cut the stems when there's like two blooms open. There's clearly more than that going on. But they are so absolutely beautiful. Like I've enjoyed them just as much just looking at them out here. But these I started in January from seed and they are so slow. So, so slow, but so worth it. I actually ordered, I think, four different varieties of Lysianthus for this next year already. There's some asters, Tower Violet. They're doing really well. Lots of buds forming. There's the uh, Gomfrinas there and Nicotiana, Purple Prince. There's some other varieties here, Bengal Rose Frost. And then one Nicotiana right there that's looking especially large. That's one plant, one. Okay, so that's pretty much what's going on in the space. Now I want to start um, gathering up my sweet pea seeds. I have a bunch of little brown paper sacks all of which have names of the varieties of sweet peas I grew this year. So this one says Molly Realstone. Um, so what I wanna do is just clip off seed pods and fill each one of these bags. Then I'm gonna take them to a shady spot to shell them. And this part is super easy. Like you wanna make sure that the pods have dried a bit, but you can't let them dry too much because if you do that, they pop open. Like they'll split and scatter the seeds all around. Um, so there's kind of like a sweet spot where you gotta Make sure you're getting them at the right time. So we'll start here. This is a variety called Old Times, and I think this is the most fragrant of the entire lot. So see like this seed pod right here has already dried up and split open, which means, oh, yep. I can see all the seeds down here on the ground already, which, you know, like isn't a big deal. Like these can come up next year if they want, <laughs> um, but that's how they spread themselves around. So you really want to get to the seed pods before they do this and throw their seeds everywhere, um, which I'm kind of like in between stage, but like this one right here looks perfect. So this one, you can see it's dried and it's mature, but it hasn't split. So we're gonna split them today. See that? Look at all those beautiful seeds. Oh, Russell, geez. Yeah, isn't that awesome? And when you consider like one pod, what does this have, six seeds? I paid like $5 for 20 seeds. And these are loaded with pods. That's where it's worth it to take the time to gather the seeds. So I've got my bag here with the variety name and I'm just gonna take all the seed pods and fill it up until each bag is full. Here we go. sweet peas. Now I'm going to harvest any of the straw flowers that still look good before pulling the plants. Sweet peas have been harvested for the most part and straw flowers 
have been pulled. I need to have somebody come help me lift that though. It's kind of heavy. But I just went to go get a drink after I was done with all of that and I was coming back this way and wanted to show you this particular view because I think it's really pretty with the sunflowers in the background. This is the view from the house anyway, what we see. But even with some of the plants being still really small and even with the empty spots, I still think it's pretty. I would call it a win for this year. And it looks a heck of a lot better to not have those yellow straw flowers. So let me show you up close. That's what the leaves look like and they were starting to burn. They looked just horrible. And that leaves me with an open spot up here, another one. So I've got like this patch here and then this one where I could pop some zinnias in. I mean, I'm not too late to do that. So I could get a little bit more production out of this space. Don't know if I'm going to just because at this point, I don't know if I want to, <laughs> to be honest. Um, it's been a really, really good year so far. And maybe I'll just quit while I'm ahead. Pincushion flowers are looking good too. Kind of forgot I had these. That's the Fama pink right there. Really beautiful long stems. Ah, I don't remember. Is it like Fama blue? Is that a thing? I'll look and see. And then there's some really beautiful like kind of shell pink, almost white. And a quick close up of some of the Snapdragons. Madame Butterfly Bronze. Isn't that beautiful? And there's some apple blossom. There's some uh, white. Madame Butterfly Bronze with white is at the very end there. So, so pretty. And before we go up and shell our sweet peas, which you don't technically have to do, I mean, you could save that for a really snowy, wintry, cold day and do that inside. But I kind of just want to button it up. I wanted to show you this red foliage right here because I got asked the last time we did a tour or I posted a picture I can't remember a lot of you guys asked what this was so this is a type of hibiscus it's called mahogany splendor isn't that amazing it looks like a Japanese maple started this from seed most all of this all of this in here corn all the flowers except for this one tiny patch right here were all started from seed everything and these were incredibly easy to grow in fact i kind of thought oh no i started them a little bit too early because they were getting quite large but they were happy they weren't hard to keep moist they were just a real pleasure which not everything is as you know if you've started lots of seeds um, but i love these because i didn't prune them back i didn't you know pinch them they just are branching out beautifully all on their own in fact i think next year i'm not going to grow them just as cut like cut foliage, I think I might uh, pop some in flower beds because what a fun alternative to coleus, you know? Something a little bit different, unique in its uh, structure. Look at those leaves. Just love it. Some are looking a little bit more pink, I'm thinking due to water. I'm thinking that's maybe what they look like if they get a little bit too much water. But honestly, for the most part, they all look really good. And I do have some love in a puff vine which one of you guys um sent me in the mail and i started these from seeds as well and they looked kind of sad when i put them out honestly because they were so i was so late and they were so stringy i just thought well we'll see what they do and so far they've filled in a bit and they're putting on the little pods the little puffs which is what we want for flower arrangements if i can untangle them from the fence <laughs> That's the thing. I think we can. And honestly, as far as cut flower gardens go, I mean, this space is enormous and it does not take very many flowers to create a lot of arrangements. Uh, I mean, you just take into consideration the zinnias. These have just started to bloom and every single one of these is going to produce a bloom. And it does not take a lot of these great big flowers like this to create a huge uh, bouquet with lots of impact. It's kind of amazing when I set up to make an arrangement, and I'm not a professional by any stretch of the imagination, but it only takes like two stems of this and three stems of that. It just does not take very much of any one thing, unless you're doing something massive, which most of the time we're not, um, to create something just really awesome. Ooh, looks like this play in the blues succumbed to some wind or something. That branch isn't looking too hot, yep. Bummer. And here's my haul from the day some gorgeous straw flowers which are already dry like I don't even need to lay these out I will so we can kind of take a look at what we've got um, and then there's all my sweet peas some of which weren't ripe like they weren't ready to harvest so like some of them I only got like half a bag so I'll have to come back in later 
but I just didn't want to miss it with some of these in particular. All right, let's go find a shady spot to handle these sweet peas. Found a nice shady spot and I've got all of my sweet pea seeds right here. So let me just show you what you do. It's really, really easy to do. And like I said, you don't have to do this until winter. Like you can leave them all in their pods and not all of mine. Like this is the Beaujolais, I think is how you say it. Not very many of them were ready yet. So I only got a few, which is totally fine. There were tons of this variety here, which was one of my favorites. I liked this one. Let's see, Mr. P is awesome. Piggy Sue, uh, Molly Rillstone. I got, I had white frills, but it was, I mean, it's just a white bloom. It's really pretty and fragrant, but it wasn't like extra special. I should I guess I could you could say and then the Spencer ripple ripple formula mix is awesome as well I ordered some of these seeds because I forgot I planted <laughs> this year so I have new seeds coming anyway um, I also planted Windsor wasn't a huge fan of that one um, so anyway I'm gonna save some of the seeds just so I can have a few but to save them it's super easy so we've got a nice brownish pod there's a little bit of green not a big deal you just kind of like squeeze it and ease it open trying to do this without them like flying toward the camera. It's harder than it looks. Ah, some of them fell out. Cut them. Anyway, you open it and then there are the seeds. So this one had a total of two fell down. So four, five, six, seven, eight all together in that right there. And based on what I paid last year, that's like $2 worth of seeds right there, which is amazing. So what I'm gonna do is just go through, shell all of these things, and then I'm just gonna put the seeds right back in these bags, and I'll tape them up and save them for next spring when I'm ready to start. So here we go, this is gonna take just a little bit. I actually might go get a little like eight by eight baking tray or some kind of something to do this in so my seeds don't fly out and roll off. That might be safest. Hold on. Okay, so I got a pie plate right here, this'll work. That will help catch all my seeds. So here we go. Look at all of those gorgeous seeds. So exciting. Don't those look pretty all laid out? I really wanted to grow straw flowers, so I had some things to work with in the wintertime, which as these dry, I mean, they're pretty much dry already. You can hear, like, when I do that with my thumb. I mean, they're just, that's the nature of the flower. They maintain their color and they look just exactly the same. Like these right here will look, maintain this look like the unopened. And then these, you know, more fully open and beautiful color and they don't wilt or anything like that. And then here are all of my sweet peas. Isn't that just so exciting? I love it. And I got the most amount out of my favorite varieties, which is perfect. Like Windsor, got a few, which is kind of perfect. Didn't love this variety. Although I think it's good to have a little bit of that color. It was weird. A few of the seeds, like the seed pod would look perfectly ready, but I would open it up and it wasn't even like the seed pod was super dry, but the seed coating had already split on some of the seeds and the seeds were split in half, which of course you want to, you know, make sure you're saving seeds that will actually germinate the next year. So you want to make sure you're saving seeds like this one right here that have a full seed coating. There's no splits, no damage, nothing like that. So anyway, that is it for today's video. I thought I might have time to put together a flower arrangement, but it ended up just taking a little bit longer than I thought, like everything <laughs> that I end up doing out in the garden. Um, but I just really wanted to take some time and show you guys some of the exciting stuff out there um, and then take care of these few little things. But everything is just so prime out there and I really need to get out there and start making some more arrangements. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.